What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, we are going to be talking about women in prison that have capital murder, life with or life without the possibility of parole, domestic violence, and my experience being locked up with these people. I would also like to put a trigger warning in here if this is something that bothers you. If you do not want to talk about DV or domestic violence, please click off of this video. I will see you in my next one. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery who has served time in prison and my entire crazy life story is in the description box down below. If you want to follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's $2. It's only ever going to be $2. All of that is linked down below, as well as my podcast and my vlog channel. We're trying to hit 100K over there. Please go subscribe. It really helps. I am also a proud partner with Groups Recover Together. Groups is a both in-person and online treatment program that strongly leans on harm reduction. They are 420 friendly and they are an amazing team of people. They are now available in 13 plus states, expanding all the time. My landing page with them is in the description box. I am also hosting a free webinar with groups where we're going to talk about my recovery. You can register for it by clicking the link in my description box. You can submit questions. And again, it's for free. It don't cost you $1. It's an hour long event happening on November 17th, 16th. I need to check my calendar. Click the link. All the information is there. All right, let's kick this thing off. We currently live in a country that protects homeowners that catch a burglar into their home more than they protect victims of domestic violence. We also live in a country that perpetrates a person who is a victim of domestic violence that kills their abuser as cold-blooded killers or mentally ill. You would think that domestic violence survivors and victims of domestic violence would get some protection. And while some laws are changing in certain states here or there, in more cases than not, even when there is documented abuse, women are sent to prison for killing their abusers all the time in this country. Before we dive into that, I do want to kind of explain what it's like to live with people with this charge, because you would naturally just assume that if someone is in prison on a murder charge, capital murder, homicide, manslaughter, there's many levels to that charge, you would just assume that they took a life that they physically pulled the trigger or they took a life or they're evil, cold-blooded murderers who deserve life in prison. You might even believe in the death penalty because after all, you took a life, we should take yours. I don't personally believe in that and I've actually filmed a video on my opinion on the death penalty. But the fact of the matter is domestic violence victims do not get the justice that they deserve and often they get thrown in prison. When you walk into a maximum security prison, there's a darkness, there's a heavy feeling. You know that people are suffering there currently. You know that people have passed away. It is a feeling that I could never describe to you. You would have to go into a prison and feel this energy, but it is heavy. And after a while you get used to it and you block it out and you kind of become cold to what's going on around you. That is in many cases to protect yourself because the human mind and the human spirit can only take so much trauma and so much darkness. I'll be completely honest here. When I was 18 and I would meet people with that charge, I probably judged them or I thought that could never happen to me or I would never take a life. and which is so ridiculous because I was living a horrible life and I was a drug dealer and I would sell guns and I was a horrible person that deserved to go to prison. But as I started to meet women in prison with that charge, I'm fascinated with psychology, I just wanted to know what their story was. And at 18, you couldn't tell me anything. At 25, I listened. There's so many cases that stick out in my mind, so I'm just gonna kind of run through some of them for you. And then we're gonna talk about how awful this country treats victims of domestic violence. One lady, um, I'm gonna call her Molly. She was fierce and she really just looked like someone's Mima, you know? Like she should just be home making cookies. And um, I people watched, you know? So I watched Molly quite a bit. And one day I just asked her, we we're all sitting around the TVs and I said, what happened? You know, what, what happened? And she said that her husband um, what, was an alcoholic and he would come home and he would beat her and rape her. And it happened for years. Um, I'm sorry. She said that one day he came home and grabbed a gun after years of telling her that he was going to kill her and get away with it, after she was caught in the cycle of domestic violence, which is very real and very, very hard to get out of, he picked up a gun, they were in a, in a fight, and she came out on top and she shot him and he died. 
And when the cops showed up there, she said, he came after me and I got the gun and I shot him. This was in uh, Arkansas. The cops basically said, open and closed case. She shot her husband. She's a cold-blooded murderer. And her trial was disgusting. Uh, they basically painted her out to be a mentally ill woman who snapped and killed her husband, which is the rhetoric that the media pushes. And her case is not unique. This happens all the time. This happens all the time. And often even in cases where there is documented proof that this woman, man too, has been a victim of violence, even when it's documented, oftentimes they are still convicted of that murder because our criminal justice system doesn't truly either understand or care about domestic violence and how that affects people. They used to call this battered woman syndrome, which is just an awful term. Men and women can be victims of domestic violence, but they used to paint this awful picture that these people were just severely mentally ill and they snapped. Now, being around these people all the time and getting to know them and hearing their stories, your heart breaks for them. But also a woman's intuition is very real. And as a woman that served time with these women, there are people that I know that I felt without a shadow of a doubt shouldn't be in prison. They genuinely were either defending themselves or a different scenario happened that I'm gonna talk about in a second and they still shouldn't be there. Like you feel in your soul if they're innocent and if they should or should not be in prison. I have met people that deserve to be there and you can feel it. I've had people look at me dead in the face and say, Jess, I didn't do it. My boyfriend did it, I, I knew nothing about it. But the way that they're saying it, I could feel, like the hair on the back of my neck would stand up and I could feel that something isn't right there. And call me crazy, call it what you will, without looking at the case, just with looking at body language and the way that these people would tell me they're innocent it didn't feel like they were innocent just by looking at them in the eye and watching them. Now, I'm not a body language expert. I am not a psychologist, but you can feel energy. I am a firm believer in that. And there have been women that I have met that a thousand percent, you could feel that they did it, you know? Um, I've talked about Leslie McCool on this channel and as kind as she is in prison and as much as I liked to talk to her and get to know her, as smart as she is, she has a master's degree, I know that she deserves to spend life in prison because she killed her mom maliciously, viciously. It was an awful thing and you can feel that around her, especially when we're talking about it. There's a heaviness there. So her case specifically, you know, we know without a shadow of a doubt that, that she did that and you can feel that. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is because it's something that you can sense. Having said that, Leslie was also manipulated and a victim of domestic violence and abuse and manipulation by her husband, Mike McCool. You can watch her Snapped episode. However, this is a very different scenario. Um, do I think that Mike manipulated her? I absolutely do. That's just a little bit different here because she went to this person's house, she went to her mother's house, killed her, and then left. Um, but I, I do think there was a factor of manipulation there. Um, but anyway, that's not what we're talking about here. I've met tons of women that are victims of domestic violence and couldn't see, their, couldn't see a way out and just happened to come out on top. I've also met women that were with their boyfriend at the time of this murder. Whether they knew about it or not, when you're a victim of domestic violence and this person has kidnapped someone, for example, taken them hostage, what are you supposed to do about it? What are you supposed to do? Because you're afraid at all times that you're gonna die. Now let's talk about this scenario for a second, okay? Let's say that your boyfriend has been abusing you and has beaten you, has sexually assaulted you, and you are a victim of domestic violence, terrified to leave. You're so afraid to leave. Now, this person has kidnapped someone and you're there, you're in the car, and they've kidnapped somebody and you're afraid to leave and you have been abused by this person and now they've kidnapped somebody. What are you supposed to do? What do you do in that situation? Now, a lot of people can just be like, oh, you're supposed to run away and call the cops and get shot and die. Like you're terrified. You are terrified. And victims of domestic violence are so afraid that they're going to be killed after they leave. So in that scenario, do you believe that let's just say it's a woman in this scenario, do you believe that that woman should try to get away from this person that has kidnapped that person? Or do you think that maybe she was thinking that, okay, the cops are gonna get called and it's gonna be okay and they're gonna come and they're gonna figure this out and no one's gonna die and I'm gonna be okay. If someone has a gun and they have just kidnapped somebody and this person has been beating me, I'm gonna be afraid to run away. I'm going to be afraid to leave because they have a gun. Well, that 
exact scenario has happened so many times. I have met so many people that were just with their boyfriend, spouse, or significant other. And I remember I'm a woman that served time in prison. That's why we're specifically talking about men killing people and their girlfriends are there because this is the scenario that I've personally seen. I'm not saying that men can't be victims of domestic violence. They can, but I am a woman that has served time in female prisons. That's why the scenario is being played out right now. I have seen this. I've heard this story a thousand times. So even though we have self-defense laws in this country, you have to prove without a reasonable doubt that you genuinely feel feared for your life at the time of this murder. And that is really hard. That is really hard to sit in a courtroom and try to explain that you have been the victim of domestic violence and without a reasonable doubt you feared for your life. Because the prosecutor in so many cases would say, you couldn't just run out the door, you couldn't have called 911, you couldn't have gotten to a phone. See, she, she could have definitely ran away at this time or that time. But they are paralyzed with fear. And statistically speaking, you're more likely to be killed after you leave your abuser. So it just goes back to our criminal justice system not understanding what these people go through in domestic violence cases. I put up a little fact sheet right here um, on domestic violence and criminalization of survival. Three women die each day from intimate partner violence. Black women are almost three times more likely to die at the hands of a current or ex-partner than members of other racial backgrounds. Among African-American women killed by their partner, almost half were killed while in the process of leaving the relationship, highlighting the need to take extra precautions at that time. According to the ACLU, ne nearly 60% of people in women's prisons nationwide and as many as 94% of women's prisons populations have a history of physical or sexual abuse before being incarcerated. And I mentioned that in, I mention that all the time on TikTok, but I've mentioned that in Arkansas, men pat women down and men also watch women shower. And that further victimizes these women. Could you imagine every day walking out of the chow hall? And this is what happens. We walk out of the chow hall specifically because can't steal a milk or a cornbread or anything. And this man pulls you aside and pats you down to make sure you don't have anything. And every single day a man is touching you Okay, how is that how, how is that appropriate? Now, obviously we need more women working in these facilities, but men would pat women down to make sure they're not stealing food out of the chow hall. That was the reason for it. Or to make sure they're not passing commissary. I've like never seen a shank taken out of the freaking chow hall. Just my personal experience. I'm just saying. A study of women incarcerated in New York's Rikers Island found that most of the domestic violence survivors interviewed reported engaging in illegal activity in response to experiences of abuse, the threat of violence, or coercion by a male partner. Another study found that 525 abused women at a mental health center who had committed at least one crime, nearly half had been coerced into committing crimes by, by their batterers as part of a structural sequence of actions and a climate of terror and diminished violence sense of self. That was a very complicated way of saying that. Um, basically, a lot of women feel as though they have to stay with their partner who are committing crimes and they feel as though they are manipulated or coerced into committing crimes. Now, I'm not saying all women that are in prison have been coerced and manipulated into committing crimes. That's not what I'm saying. I'm specifically talking about domestic violence cases in this video. I was guilty. No one coerced me, but we're not talking about me. We're talking about crimes of violence and people that have been victims of domestic violence. So again, not me. Not saying that every single woman in prison is innocent and it's a man's fault. That's also not what I'm saying. So please don't put words in my mouth. I'm just trying to explain to you how often this happens. Pregnant women or women who recently gave birth face a higher risk of escalating domestic violence. Each year, 324,000 pregnant women are physically or sexually assaulted by an intimate partner. Oh my God. Domestic violence also accounts for a large portion of maternal morality. Homicide is the second leading cause of injury related deaths in pregnant and postpartum women in the United States. These statistics are awful and heartbreaking. 70% of people in women's prisons are mothers and number of mothers in prison in the US increased by 122% between 1991 and 2007. Not only are the vast majority of people in women's prisons mothers when they enter prison, but many of these people are also the primary caregiver of their child. 1.3 million children are affected by female imprisonment. The number includes the children at home when their mother is imprisoned and the baby is born and raised in prison. In 33 states in the US, it is legal to shackle a female inmate while she is giving birth. 
31 of these states do not require prison employees to check with medical staff before determining whether or not a prisoner should be restrained. I can confirm I was restrained and put in chains when I was giving birth. These cases are widespread. There are so many cases that these women should not be in prison. Jen Cutting recently filmed a video on her friend Jessica who was serving time in Illinois who is a victim of domestic violence and I'm gonna link that video down below. I am now also a board member on a nonprofit that focuses on prison reform and we are working on a case right now and I'm going to make a video for next week walking you through Nancy Rich's case. I can't begin to tell you how many women I've met that I genuinely don't believe should be there. In the last prison that I was at, there was a woman that would openly share her story and she told me straight up, watch out who you are dating. When you see a red flag, leave. Get away from these men that are violent, that are manipulative, that threaten you, and here's why. I'm a victim of domestic violence. I never killed anyone, but I have a murder charge. He pulled the trigger and I didn't leave. So in her scenario, this man killed somebody. She was in the car outside of this person's home. He went in, killed this person. At the time of the murder, she did not know that he went there to murder him. Did she find out after the fact? I think so. Based on what she told me, I cannot clarify that. But she openly said, I did not pull a trigger and now I have life in prison. Watch out for the people that you are around. I don't believe that we should be incarcerating people that didn't pull the trigger. I don't believe that we should be incarcerating victims of domestic violence when their partner commits a violent crime and they don't leave because they're afraid to leave. Because in a lot of cases, people are killed after they try to leave their abuser or during trying to leave. I'm going to end this video here, but this is just kind of the first video that we're talking about domestic violence. And I'm going to start breaking down these cases, especially with the cases that we are trying to um, work on in the nonprofit that I am now a board member of, Free Bird Movement. So I'm going to be bringing these cases to you guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to answer them and do an entire Q&A on domestic violence survivors, specifically in prison. I think it's such an important topic and I think it doesn't get enough coverage. I think most people just think that, oh, if you have a murder charge, then you should be in prison forever. I th also think a lot of people blindly believe in our criminal justice system and they think that all people in prison are guilty of murder. But I can't even begin to tell you how many women I met that never pulled the trigger. I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay in recovery, whatever that looks like to you. And if you're struggling with domestic violence, please reach out for help. I love you guys.